So yeah, the presenter is Abhishek and the title of presentation is Anytime Ellipsoidal or Approximation of Forward Reachable Sets of Uncertain Linear Systems. Please. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Majid. Uh, can you see my full screen? Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, okay, so what I'm going to talk about uh, in this last uh, talk, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, ellipsoidal over approximation of forward reach sets. So very much in line of the last talk and last speaker did a great job of introducing many of the concepts. So that, that makes my life much easier. Um, uh, so in this particular work, what we did is we in, um, explored the idea whether uh, the ellipsoidal or in general over approximation of forward reach sets, it's a computationally intensive task, whether that uh, can be implemented through an anytime algorithm manner. Okay, uh, I'll explain what that means. <clears throat> uh, this is joint work with uh, graduate student uh, Shadi Haddad at UC Santa Cruz. Um, as the last presentation, you know, they did really a great job of introducing. So, you know, we all know that validation and verification computation for safety critical cyber physical systems. Uh, it's an important task for performance guarantees. And, uh, you know, the common approach is to compute a provably tight outer approximation of the forward reach sets of the closed loop dynamics. And uh, so there are two qualifiers here. One is uh, outer, uh, the second qualifier is tight. So the reason for the qualifier outer is that we want to guarantee safety. Okay, so we always want an over approximation of the reach set. And uh, the qualifier tight, what it means is that although we want an outer approximation, we don't want to be too conservative. In other words, we want to be, we want to minimize the conservatism in our outer approximation. So that naturally leads to an optimization problem. And typical criteria are, for example, minimum volumes, and there are, you know, depending on the shape chosen, there could be other criteria to optimize. Um, and this is a natural formulation of the problem because you know this this leads to uh, this uh, accounts a way to um, uh, consider said valued uncertainties, uh, which could be in the initial conditions, parameters, uh, disturbances, or even you know actuations. So this talk we're going to you know just like the previous talk, it's going to focus more on the methodological aspect uh, of the computation. Um, uh, as you all know, you know, this is a computationally demanding task. The com task of computing forward resets or over approximating forward resets uh, is usually computationally demanding. And, uh, you know, in this slide, I essentially review or group uh, the existing uh, methods for this task in three categories. The first category is, uh, you know, what we can call non parametric methods. And, you know, there are methods such as, uh, you know, computing level sets. So here the idea is that, you, you know, the reach sets could be seen as the zero sub level sets of the viscosity solution of the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation. So there are already computational toolboxes available, uh, such as level set toolbox, which exploits this idea. And computation, you know, uh, is uh, focused from that particular philosophy. Um, and then there are, you know, uh, both in general algorithms and toolboxes available, which essentially are parametric computation. So in the second class, this parametric uh, uh, algorithms, the idea is to over approximate the forward reach set using simple geometrical shapes. Okay, so for example, if we are doing an ellipsoidal over approximation, uh, then we have this ellipsoidal toolbox and then there is a toolbox called Cora, where the idea is to approximate it using what is called zonotopes, which are essentially Minkowski sum of line segments. And there are other shapes, uh, you know, other toolboxes and softwares available also, depending on different choice of shapes. And, uh, you know, uh, other than this non parametric and parametric, these are kind of two extremes. In between, there is the semi parametric, uh, you know, we can think about this as semi parametric class of models, which are the, you know, type of. Uh, um, uh, algorithms that you know, Alex described, which are data-driven reachability algorithms. And where the idea is that we do not uh, have a model, so we only need an execution oracle. So this is a, you know, a strength of this uh, you know, algorithms. And depending on just sample-based evaluation, um, and then we can, you know, once we get all the samples, then you know, we may fit a parameter and give some probabilistic guarantees. <clears throat> and this is, a, there is a, this is a growing literature in this area. Um, now, 
Now, all three class of algorithms are in general, you know, for general uh, type of closed loop dynamics, this is usually computationally demanding task. On the other hand, we also have, uh, you know, CPS application focus in mind. And for safety critical CPS applications, for example, typically vehicular CPS like uh, uh, drones or, you know, autonomous uh, driving act type of applications, we typically have scarce computational resources stemming from engineering constraints such as weight constraint, power constraint and cost. Uh, so on one hand, we have algorithms which are computationally heavy. On one other hand, we have cyber physical system platforms where we do not have a high computational resource. So to address this uh, kind of dichotomy, so one natural idea that we wanted to explore is whether we can do any time over approximation of the forward reach sets. So the idea is that we want the over approximation to still be provably correct, meaning that it is uh, still provably safe, but the performance, uh, the idea is that can we dynamically trade off performance in a, you know, something like a computationally aware manner, meaning we want to monotonically adapt the tightness with respect to the computational time available. For example, one can imagine that if there is more processor time available, so then um, the approximation should not only be an over approximation, it should get tighter. And if there is less computational time available, then you know, it should automatically adapt and uh, you know, the, the, it should be more conservative, okay? But all the while preserving the over approximation guarantee, okay? So that's what we mean by any time. Um, so in this particular talk, although this idea is a little bit general, so I'm going to restrict the scope and uh, I'm going to focus on model-based uh, you know, systems. And in fact, I'm going to focus on the linear systems, the simplest setting um, where you have linear systems with set valued uncertainties. And I'm going to focus on the parametric class of algorithms, namely anytime ellipsoidal over approximation. Okay? So I'll focus on ellipsoids. <clears throat> but the focus will be that um, can, if we stay on the ellipsoidal over approximation algorithms, even for the simple linear system setting with set valued uncertainties, can, you know, can we uh, modify the existing algorithms that are available in the literature in any time fashion? Okay. What time do we stop? 15, I think. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, ellipsoids typically, you know, ellipsoids have very well known parameterizations. You know, here are two uh, possible parameterizations of ellipsoids that are relevant to our work. One is what is called this QQ parameterization. Essentially, small q is the, you know, center vector for the ellipsoid. Um, it's a d dimensional vector if it's a d dimensional ellipsoid. And then you have this, um, um, you know, symmetric positive definite matrix Q. This is typically called the shape matrix. Okay. So Q defines the center and capital Q matrix that defines the shape of the ellipsoid. And then, you know, you can also define as a quadratic form inequality. So you, there is, you know, typically what is called ABC parameterization. And you can go back and forth between this QQ and ABC parameterization. Now, why ellipsoids? Why not other shapes? Now, ellipsoid, uh, ellipsoids do have some attractive properties as uh, shape primitives for approximating these uh, you know, forward reach sets. One is that they have fixed parameterization complexity. So if you're talking about a non-degenerate ellipsoid in D dimension, so we only need to store you know, D into D plus three by two reals because of the symmetry of the positive definite matrix. Now this fixed parameterization complexity uh, could be important for CPS application. For example, if you are thinking about uh, um, implementing a, uh, something like a communication protocol, and if you want to encode the, uh, you know, the shape primitive as a packet content in the communication protocol, then we may need to, you know, we may want that the parameterization complexity should not be variable meaning that if it is, you know, if we just do ellipsoids, so at different times we may get different ellipsoids, but that should have the, you know, the same parameterization or bit length complexity, okay? This is not true. For example, if we use some other uh, shape primitives, for example, polytope, okay? Uh, depending on how many vertices and faces we have, we may need to uh, store variable numbers of matrices and vectors. The second attractive point is that it is natural for modeling, for example, especially in systems control engineering, we have weighted norm bounded uncertainties, and these are naturally represented as uh, time varying ellipsoids. These are also mathematically uh, you know, nice because um, for doing or promoting the tightness of the over approximation, 
you know, a typical approach is to compute what is called minimum volume outer ellipsoid. And these also go by the name of uh, loner John ellipsoid. And uh, I'm going to denote this as this ELJ. And so this can be thought of as a set valued operator. Okay, so it, it is known that if we give any compact set, the loner John ellipsoid or minimum volume outer ellipsoid of any compact set is unique. Okay, so this uniqueness part is the result. <clears throat> So we can think about it as a set valued operator that takes a compact set and returns this minimum volume outer ellipsoid. Um, so in this particular you know, case study, what we're going to do, we are going to consider simple linear systems, which have, you know, the uh, X is the state vector, U is the control input and uh, W is the disturbance. And we may have uncertainties in the initial condition and all uncertainties are set valued and ellipsoidal. So initial condition, you know, uh, vector is taken from an ellipsoid, which is a center vector small x zero, and you know, shape matrix capital X zero. Similarly, the control belongs to a time varying uh, ellipsoidal set, and uh, you know, the disturbance W, which is unmeasured disturbance, this is also coming from a uh, time varying ellipsoidal set. Then the forward set is essentially given this ellipsoidal set value description and given this dynamics, um, what are the set of states uh, the you know state vector can reach. Okay, <clears throat> so the idea that uh, you know we are inspired by is this uh, you know is, is de was developed as a series of papers by Kurjansky and uh, Pravin Varaya, and so their idea was to um, come up with this particular type of uh, over approximation of R, okay, the true rich set. Um, so the idea here is to over approximate R by what is called this R hat subscript n. Now n capital N is a natural number. So here the idea is that we are going to construct a special type of parametric family of ellipsoids, okay? And these parametric set, because these are all ellipsoids, these each of them have their own center vector, this XCT and their own uh, shape matrix. And this T is the time and capital XIT, the subscript I denotes which ellipsoid, okay? So this is the index of the ellipsoid in that family. So this is a, you know, if capital N ellipsoid, so each of them have their own shape matrix, but they have the same center vector XCT. Okay, so really the parameterization is on uh, the shape matrix. <clears throat> now these are parameterized by some choice of unit vectors, okay, uh, in the state space, L10 to L capital N0. Okay, so the idea is that the param, you know, this construction is made in such a way, this R N hat, this over approximation is defined as the intersection of this, you know, family of ellipsoids. Okay, so this intersection is over the number of ellipsoid for any finite N. Okay, the guarantee is that these ellipsoids are to be constructed in such a manner that for any finite N, this is an over approximation. Okay, not only that, if I keep increasing capital N, meaning I you know, start intersecting more uh, ellipsoids, so you know, it can only get smaller, so it will get tighter. Approximation it will get tighter. In fact, uh, you know, the guarantee asymptotically it is exact. So if I let n goes to infinity, so I'll recover the original set. <clears throat> okay. Now, how, how does the construction goes? The construction goes by this, you know, from this li zero, this is the, you know, this are the, really the parameters of uh, this Li0, so the choice of the unit vectors. And you essentially propagate these unit vectors um, through this adjoint uh, state dynamics. So, you, you know, so Li0 gives rise to this Lit at some time t, and using the, you know, some kind of nonlinear function, you get some scalar pi it, and you find some kind of orthogonal matrix Sit at time t, which is essentially is a rotation from a given, you know, uh, <clears throat> unit vector to another unit vector. Now this can be, you know, there are known algorithms to do this in order of n square time, n is the you know, state space dimension. Now, once you have all these parameters defined, what you do, you essentially construct these ellipsoids to propagate these ellipsoids as initial value problems, okay? So the center vector of each of these ellipsoids in this family, this is the common center vector, so it's the same center. So this is simply the dynamics, okay? Through this, you know, center vector with the initial condition x0, small x0, and small x0 is the center of the original initial um, ellipsoidal center. Okay, now how do you propagate the, uh, the shape matrices for each of this ellipsoid? This is where the index i comes in, and this is done through, you know, uh, rather nonlinear equations involving this parameterization li. So all these uh, things that I have defined, they come into play here. And subject to this x0, capital x0, 
their initial conditions. So they start from the same initial shape matrix, but they have different dynamics. Okay? The, the reason they have different dynamics because this pi it and you know this si these things comes into play. They in turn depend on lit, which in turn depend on li zero, and li zero in turn was a choice of different unit vectors. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, now this uh, on the face looks complicated, but something interesting happening here is that this is a non-interacting, uh, you know, propagation, meaning these, uh, you know, initial value problems are not dependent on each other, which means that these are potentially parallelizable, okay? Um, now, suppose that for a moment that we can compute or propagate all these ellipsoids. Um, so that means we have this, family, essentially we have description of this family, which means that implicitly speaking, we have description of this Rn hat, okay, which is described as, you know, a finite intersection of each of this ellipsoid, which have now are numerically we have obtained. So these, uh, you know, shapes we have computed. So the only question is how are we going to actually or computationally going to represent or approximate this intersection. So the natural idea there is to compute the minimum volume outer ellipsoid of this Rn hat. Okay, so that is uh, formulated as a convex uh, optimization problem, which you want to, uh, because the center vectors are common. So the real unknown is, you know, the uh, capital XT, which is the shape matrix of this, uh, that describes this minimum volume outer ellipsoid. And subject to the constraint that the intersection of the given ellipsoids, the given n ellipsoids must be contained within the ellipsoid that we are, content, uh, that we are uh, trying to compute, okay. <clears throat> Now, this is a class of uh, convex optimization problem, which is called semi-infinite programming problem. Now, in the earlier talk, uh, you know, the speaker showed a um, finite number of points and finding minimum volume outer ellipsoid. That is actually a semi-definite programming problem. But here, it is not known whether this problem is SDP representable or not, okay? Um, in fact, uh, verifying this constraint, so if we give not only this n once, but also a known capital XT is just verifying this for the given n plus one ellipsoids is NP complete. Okay, so this is a computationally hard problem. Um, so typically what is done in the literature and it's known to uh, work well in practice is to obtain a, a relaxation based on the S procedure. So uh, from this, what is usually done, so you essentially modify this uh, constraint and you know, solve a max state problem subject to LMI or linear matrix inequality uh, constraints. And that gives an ellipsoid. Now, importantly, this problem is solved in ABC parameterization, okay? So you know, to have this uh, formulation, we need to choose change parameterization. Now, once this parameterization you know, it is solved, of course, we can come back and return it in the QQ parameterization. Okay, so the guarantee is that the, this, the ellipsoid that is obtained by solving this problem optimization problem is guaranteed to be an over approximation of the true MVOE, true minimum volume outer ellipsoid, okay? Okay, so uh, even without the anytime idea, uh, we already see that there is a couple of attractive features of this computation. One attractive feature is that propagation of ellipsoid is solving this N plus one initial value problems can be run in parallel, okay? The other attractive feature is that typically in applications we are interested in the you know the ellipsoidal over approximation of the not the whole rich set but rich set over a you know subset of states for example in collision avoidance if it is a uh, drones or a car collision avoidance we may only be interested in the position coordinates okay so although the propagation then in the in this initial value problems this needs to be pro uh, you know because these things are coupled over the dynamics so this needs to be propagated over the whole state space um, then, you know, the, the usual approach would be to we propagate the ellipsoids, then solve this high dimensional, uh, you know, optimization problem and over the whole state space again, and then we project, okay? But uh, this problem has little more structure. Uh, it turns out if you take the projection of this ELJ, which is this, you know, I mentioned as a state valued operator, this, in fact, this ELJ as an operator, it can be shown that it commutes with any, uh, sorry, any linear map, okay, uh, any affine map. So, <clears throat> so it does uh, commute with the projection operator. So this, this is the reason for this equality. So the projection can be taken inside. Now you have projection of the intersection. Now, you know, uh, transformation of the intersection is always contained in the intersection of the transformation. So the projection, you know, at the expense of this weakening 
of the set containment, we can take the projection inside. What that means is that uh, um, we can immediately project and then solve the optimization problem. So we need to propagate and then project and solve the optimization problem. The reason why the last uh, you know, the inclusion is valid, this is valid by construction because minimizer of the map state problem is already you know, the, is larger than theoretically guaranteed to be larger than the ELJ, okay? Or the minimum volume outer ellipsoid. Okay, so this, uh, these two are the two things which can you know, uh, contribute to some computational saving. Uh, so what that suggests is that uh, we can do an anytime computation in the following manner. We can, we can uh, take the initial ellipsoid and then propagate them, you know, choose some random vectors, random um, unit vectors in the state space. And each random unit vector uh, leads to a specific parameterization. That means it, you know, corresponding to that, it can be propagated over some time horizon delta t, which need not be small, okay? So, so from k delta t to k plus one delta t, delta t need not be small. And so you choose an n max, how many ellipsoids we're going to propagate, okay? Uh, even if n, n is one or n max is one, you know, essentially there is no optimization, but it is guaranteed to be an over approximation. If it is two, you know, you need to do an optimization. Uh, it's guaranteed to be over approximation, but as I increase n, okay, the, the over approximation is going to be tight, okay? So then you propagate the ellipsoids solving this uh, initial value problems in parallel, then you project, and then you solve the map state problem, then you return that, okay? This is the idea. And we implemented this, uh, uh, okay, before going to the implementation. So, um, <clears throat> so we are assuming that uh, delta t, the time horizon uh, of our computation is such that uh, the time available from the processor is such that it is, you know, at least enough to do one, uh, ellipsoidal computation. So there are two types of computational times involved here. One is the uh, computational time needed to do the propagation. We are saving a little bit because if we're doing parallel. Uh, and then there is a computational time, there is no parallelization here, uh, to solve this math step problem, okay? And uh, we did very simple implementation, MATLAB based, uh, you know, with CVX, uh, no specialized solvers. And um, the important thing here is that the T available does depend on processor availability. So potentially it could be random. And, uh, you know, so the implementation we did uh, uh, as a first cut is to essentially uh, do something like a you know, naive uh, least square based regression where you have T propagation plus T opt. We done sometimes collect some data uh, for different instances of the problem, uh, estimate effect from the data and then you find the, you know, give a T available, then find the N max, okay? Uh, because of this assumption, this, you know, this delta T is always uh, is such that at least one, uh, N equals to one, it is feasible. So we'll always get an answer here. Okay. So perhaps a better idea to do this uh, is to learn N max online, which is, which will be our future work. <clears throat> uh, so we did one numerical case study where we essentially studied, uh, you know, the standard quadrotor rigid body model, where you know you have twelve states, uh, four inputs. Inputs are essentially the controls are the angular velocities uh, above the nominal angular velocities of the of the each of the rotors, and P is three unmeasured disturbances. Disturbances are only acting through the uh, forcing channels. <clears throat> um, so the so what we did, we we have a linearized open loop model, and then on top of that, we uh, close the loop with a finite horizon linear LQ tracker. And we assume that we have some estimation error. And so essentially it looks like the closed loop looks like this, you know, uh, <clears throat> the reason closed loop will be LTV is because, uh, you know, the because the, we are closing the loop with the LQ tracker. So there is a feedback gain time varying and the uh, B closed loop times eta, this eta, this input, what plays the role of input, this has a, it's coming from two parts. One is that there is a feed forward component of the control that is driving, that is part of eta. And another is there is some estimation error, x minus x hat. And we are assuming the estimation error also has an ellipsoidal uncertainty, which is uh, you know, between ellipsoid zero and et, that gives rise to eta, which is this vt comma vt, p e p transpose. Okay, and then there is this disturbance. Okay, so here is uh, some snapshot of the, uh, the ellipsoids that are getting generated. So this is the ellipsoidal over approximation in only in the position coordinates, okay, in the 10 snapshots in uh, time horizon between zero to one, 
and with n max 10. Okay, and for the supervisory algorithm, we essentially use the um, the you know regression, simple regression, no no online learning. Okay, um, so here is a summary of findings. Um, so we uh, considered the anytime implementation for the ellipsoidal over approximation. And we found that computational time is essentially dominated by the propagation. So we have some plots in the paper. So roughly speaking, uh, in the order of magnitude, uh, the, to uh, solve this optimization problem, this max state problem, it takes of the order of 10 seconds. For in, we, we experimented with n equals to one to 10, n max one to 10. So, uh, you know, it's nonlinear, it's data dependent, but it is always of the order of 10 seconds, okay, without writing, writing any specialized code, just the off the shelf CVS. <clears throat> Whereas, uh, you know, the, the propagation time, namely the time needed to solve these equations, that is uh, one order of magnitude expensive, meaning it's like about 100 seconds, okay. Okay, so. Uh, so one important direction that we are considering is how to bring down this propagation cost. Uh, there is definitely possible to bring down the optimization cost by writing uh, custom solvers, but how to bring down the propagation cost that uh, seems a little bit non-trivial problem. So that is one direction of work. And the other uh, directions we are exploring is that, uh, you know, this is very, you know, uh, perhaps very narrow scope of applying the anytime algorithms, you know, uh, by restricting ourselves to one class of parametric uh, uh, approximation, but what happens if you consider, for example, other class of parametric approximations uh, for which already there are some existing software such as uh, zonotopes like, uh, and uh, other shapes. And perhaps this can also be explored in the non-parametric or the semi-parametric setting, just the you know, idea of doing any time algorithms, okay? Meaning dynamically adapting the performance guarantees while preserving the over approximation. Okay? And I mentioned about uh, online learning, learning for the supervisor. I'll stop here and uh, I'll thank you everybody for staying in the workshop and participating and I will be happy to take questions. Yeah, thank you, Abhishek. Any question for Abhishek? I think it's Stan has a question, yeah. Sure, I can ask one. So <laughs> at one point you were computing a minimum volume uh, ellipsoids. And so I was wondering what, what's the, what was the motivation for doing that again? So the minimum volume. So you know, we, we essentially said that we want to tightest over approximation. You want to what? We want, okay. we want to we want to compute tightest over approximation. The ellipsoids we are cons constructing, you know, by construction it is guaranteed to be over approximation. But you know, the we can be very conservative, right? So we are uh, solving the optimization problem to uh, reduce the conservatism. So you really want the intersection of all of the ellipsoids. That's the, the yeah the minimum. Yeah, minimum volume ellipsoid containing the intersection of all of those ellipsoids. Mm -hmm. So there may be some things you can do. Uh, it, it depends what you're trying to do. Like if you're trying to check if there's a, a certain point is inside the intersection, you could distribute this and just check it on each of the ellipsoids individually. Mm -hmm. and, and then you wouldn't need to actually compute the, the minimum volume ellipsoid. Um, even things like plotting, if you're just projecting to two or three dimensions and plotting, there, there's algorithms to approximate that, right? So for visualization purposes, you can get that uh, uh, somehow. So, so the, maybe the comment would be to uh, consider what operations you, you need to do on that intersection and then see if you can distribute those as well. And then you could avoid that, that optimization. Sure, sure, sure. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Sam? Yeah. Sure, can you hear me okay? No, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, just a quick clarification question. So I, I saw that you have both a control input and a disturbance input, but I, I, I missed sort of what, what the difference between the roles of those two signals were. So yeah, yeah. So you know, we, you we yeah, we are we are considering a little bit, uh, you know, general modeling setting. So the disturbance is unmeasured disturbance. So, you know, in, in, in the quadrotor example, these are essentially wind cast. So these are only mm -hmm. acting on the translational forcing coordinates. Um, and control is essentially, you know, actuation uncertainties and, uh, you know, in general, but here what is happening is that the part of the control is, uh, you know, the so-called control is coming from the estimation error. So the measurement, you know, or the estimation it is contributing to the control. So that is why I use a different symbolic term. Because it's okay, but you, you treat them mathematically. They're both, you're trying yeah, to compute region. So, I, okay. So, but the, I think the, the equations you showed from, from the Krasansky Mariah literature 
don't don't it, it, there it's a game where the controller is 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 has a different role than the disturbance right or am i misunderstanding something no so yeah so so yeah that's a great point so yeah so they have uh, actually a lot of papers for starting from 1990s to early 2000 so some you know part of that literature he considers it to be game uh, where they allow the so here the setting i'm considering the feedback policy is given Okay, I so it's a okay. grand feedback policy. So uh, they do have a SIAM paper uh, where they say that they are going to con, you know, con, uh, design the feedback on the fly. So that depends on anticipative or non-anticipative, you are right. Yeah. So that's not what I'm doing here. It's the given feedback. Okay, understood. Thanks for the clarification. So any more question? So yeah. Uh, I guess the all the sessions are done, and now we are technically in the concluding session. And I guess before concluding or people leave, I think Ricardo wanted to take a attendance photo in a grid way <laughs> that everybody can fit. <laughs> so I mean, no pressure, but if everybody is willing you can turn on your camera this this potentially can go to the ieee control system magazine so you're going to get famous <laughs> so are you ricardo are you taking the photo yeah i i'll be happy to i can do a snapshot unless there is better technology for it <laughs>